Is the mic? Okay, great. I'm not used to hearing my own voice, so this is a little weird. But I'm glad everybody stuck around. Last talk of the day before happy hour. I'm sure everybody's hungry and tired. So, um, but I'm Aaron Boger. Um, I'm with Erlang Solutions. I've got a pretty long fintech background, um, US and across Asia. Uh, former Rubyist, like many people um, in the electric community. Um, I'm, a I'm an avid hiker. I love hiking, I love the outdoors. And I'm on LinkedIn if everybody wants to connect. Um, feel free to connect. Um, but this has already been kind of asked a little bit, but <laughs> seems like a lot of people are familiar with ETS. How many people are familiar with Amnesia? How many people are actually using it in a project? <laughs> See, this is, this is something. Um, so it doesn't look like anybody here is pretty new to ETS or Amnesia. It seems like we got a lot of senior experienced people. So we'll move on. But why use these? I'm sure many of you know, they're faster. It adds a lot of speed, reduces latency when requests come in to requests go out. Um, you can use native Elixir data types, I'm sure you all know, and even functions, which are really, really nice. Um, but the one I like the most is reducing database dependency. And we're dealing with modern web apps and currently the way we use web apps. Shrinking down that database dependencies, I think, is, is really important. And also, these, these technologies got many years of experience. I tried to find out how old these are, and I probably should ask people like Francesco and stuff who are here, but I didn't before the talk, so. But they date back to the early 90s, if not the first release of Elixir, or excuse me, Erlang. So the database dependency to me is kind of the thing that I, I kept coming across when I was working on various apps. I kept doing the same things over and over again to kind of reduce the amount of calls. I, I do UML diagrams of, of method calls, you know, tracing the entire request through the app, and be surprised at sometimes at how often we hit that database. Sometimes just simple request took five, six, seven calls to the database for a lot of stuff. And as we're developing and writing code, we just kind of take for granted, we don't really look at how many times we hit the database. And so reducing some of those requests can make a huge difference in your app um, and, and make a difference in your, your database capacity, not in terms of storage, but just throughput and, and things of that nature. So the kind of made me come across this active memory um, the goals of it, number one, is to help increase awareness. Um, a lot of us in the Elixir community come from other languages, and tools like ETS and Amnesia are not in those other languages. And I think because of that, they're not top of conscious. We're not, when we go to solve problems in, in, our, in our systems and things, we don't think of them naturally as much. Um, and so I want to kind of help bring it up a little more because I think these are really good tools. And I know in this room you guys have a lot of ETS experience, but a lot of the apps I've been involved with, even with some senior lectures, developers, there's almost no ETS, almost no amnesia. They're very rarely used. And it could be just like a small set, you know, just me and my experiences, but it just seems to be the case. Um, and so I also want to kind of help push the discussion and exploration of maybe getting some more packages and libs around them, because there, there isn't that many. Also wanted to kind of simplify the implementation and the use. Um, things like setup tables, data management, the basic CRUD stuff, pulling things in, putting things out, or pulling things out, putting things in. Um, schema changes with things like amnesia and initial setup. And I also wanted to create a common familiar syntax along the lines of actor record, acto a lot of us are familiar with. But I didn't want to lump these in. I know there's been attempts of using an extensions to, ET, uh, to Ecto for these, but it just doesn't feel right because they're very different tools. And I got the two, two trucks here, the delivery trucks. And it's a, to me, it's a good analogy because they both are delivery trucks, but they have completely different use cases. You wouldn't want to use that giant semi truck to deliver to local neighborhoods and tight streets and things of that nature, small packages. It's just not a practical use case for it. And then the same thing is you don't want to use a tiny delivery truck to run around large cross-state, huge halls of mass amount of goods. It's just not practical. But they both are delivery trucks, and they both have specific use cases. And I think maintaining a separation of that name, that, that thinking in our minds of how we use these tools is important. And that's why I think keeping it separate from Ecto is, is important. 
So during my time with the Elixir, I've come across a bunch of use cases where I found these tools, ETS and Amnesia, very helpful. Um, button. Okay, here we go. Um, application secrets and settings. This has been a good one. Uh, provided a simple UI using Live View um, and uh, boot up the app. It read in a default set of uh, application settings and secrets. And then the UI could go in and edit these. And these came really helpful when we were in, for example, a staging environment. And we wanted to test production type scenarios. We could easily go into the UI, update those credentials, update whatever it is. If we're making third, third party API calls, the things like AWS or payment providers was a big one. So we didn't use those credentials other than obviously production. And we had separate ones for sandboxes and stuff. You could actually change these on the fly. And it worked really, really well. And it also helped clean up our config files, because things just get kind of chucked into those files and environmental files kind of scatter all over our apps. Cleaning them up, putting them in a simple place, giving a nice little UI to it was very helpful. Um, another one is one-time use tokens. These are very short-lived things. Um, you know, uh, password reset tokens, all these kinds of stuff. Again. Uh, put it in a nice amnesia table. Sometimes we would include things that are necessary. So if people come back in from a password, uh, like a magic link, we would store a, a current user struct, which is typically not a full user anyways. Typically when you have like a current user, it's just basic small set of data, um, subset of what an actual user is, email, maybe a UID, an ID, just a small set of data. That would all get thrown in. People come in from the the link, they automatically get put into the app. We don't need to go to the database. It's all right there, ready for them. And then we put in a refresh for the gen server to go in and sweep these out on a regular basis. And it worked really, really well. Another one is API keys. Uh, a lot of apps I see kind of are going this way with the back end, supporting multiple front end clients, um, an Android app, uh, iOS app, some SPAs. I worked with one client in Japan that had 300 of these things that are primarily WordPress sites. And we were able to put all those API keys, you know, more of like identity versus an actual key inside these, along with some basic configuration. So again, when those API requests come in, they come in every single time for every single request. I mean, we significantly reduced the, the database burden with this, and it worked really, really well. Button's not working. JWT encryption keys. This was another one. We issued JWTs. We we stored both the private, well, the private key and the public key. We had an endpoint to publish the public key because all good consumers of those JWTs should be verifying that uh, uh, authenticity. And then the, the private key was readily available for use encryption throughout the application um, and issuing of those. And then they refreshed on a regular basis as well. We rotated those out. And this worked really well. Admin user management. Admin users are usually a very small subset of the actual users. So putting all of that inside uh, an amnesia or ETS table worked really, really well to help reduce that database dependency. Uh, session management. This one was a great one, too. It was in the same app where we did the API keys for the clients. The user session management stuff was able to be stored in there as well. So when the user came in, the API request identifying the client along with the client configuration as well as the user and the session information was all stored in these tables. We had almost no hits to the database. It was all really fast and uh, worked really, really well. And so that's kind of what made me want to write active memory. So some of the features are we have a, a table, um, try to create an easy syntax. Um, it has the ability to auto-generate UUIDs, uh, and it's able to handle a lot of amnesia and ETS basic options and things. So it's kind of somewhat of a flow through on that. We also, I also added something called migrations, which will modify the, the, the structure uh, where you can connect into amnesia, you add the node, copy table, all that kind of stuff. Um, and add the query syntax. Obviously, Amnesia and ETS are very different kind of technologies, Et Amnesia being distributed. Some of the query syntax between the two is slightly different, but they both use things like match specs, which aren't very approachable to a lot of developers. And so I created these syntax here, the match syntax, where you're able to use your basic operators and everything, and they're agnostic. It doesn't matter if you're using ETS or Amnesia. You can change these table types, and the queries should work just as they are. 
and the other one's more of a straight key value, pat, uh, key value matching. And then we have what's called the store. And the store is basically just backed by a gen server, and it manages the table. And it has your basic CRUD operations, where you can get all, delete, delete all. And then I added the one withdraw, which I used a lot because of things like the one-time use tokens and things of that nature. You want to get the data and then delete it after you've gotten it. So you can only get it once. Um, and then the basic write. And I tried to keep a syntax that was not the same to be confused with Ecto, but at the same time familiar for everybody to be able to use. And then another feature of the store, seeing that it's backed by a gen server, is during initialization, when the, when the, when the app first boots, um, you have the ability to add a seed file. And it'll just read the seeds in and populate the data. You can do that, um, what's that word? You know, item potently, you know, with the find a creator, something along those lines. Um, and it worked really, works really well. And the other thing is before init, which is a little tough on naming this one, because it's not really before, it's like during init. It'll help you run some special methods that you need to get run to set things up, maybe set a specific, specific state. You need things run going before you have it. You can add these functions in there as well. And then the initial state is another one. So a lot of the, the tables that I had were things that needed to be refreshed on a regular basis. So I'd set up an initial state of when the last time these things were refreshed. And so you can kind of go in and you can you can, you can check that state. Had their last refresh happened, and how many records were deleted, all that kind of stuff. So you can just set that initial state structure up how you want it within that gen server, and then how you want to maintain it, obviously, throughout the rest of the code you write. And so with all of this in mind, I got experimenting a little bit more. And this Amnesia Manager is kind of more of a design kind of a concept that I've been toying with. And basically, it's an abstraction where it's just a simple general Elixir app. It's just almost no code other than maybe libcluster connect to everything. So that way, there's almost no reason to reboot this thing. It can run 24-7. It's, you know, it's just you know, pretty bulletproof. And it abstracts away some of the responsibilities of, of amnesia. And uh, for example, disk persistence. I use this to disk persist. And then heavy write tables, because I know there's been some issues with consistency. So before Amnesia writes, an easy consistency amongst the nodes. So if you have a heavy write table, you can store that and use uh, Amnesia's table transparency, where each node can connect, but as long as the table's in that cluster, it doesn't matter where that table is or which node that table's on, um, it'll write to that and it'll read from that. And so the goal of this is kind of assist with horizontal scaling. Things spin up, things spin down, connect in, Get, get the data you need, um, things of that nature. So this is kind of what it looks like. So we got three Phoenix apps here, and all of these Phoenix apps just really have only RAM copies. And then the memory manager has a RAM copy as well as disk persistence. And then these guys can spin up and spin down as they want. And then this is the case if you have a heavy write table. And then did a little homework on this one, did some bench tests, nothing too significant. But there is a penalty for the reads. There's significant, well, eight times slower, but it's still faster than a database. But the writes are about the same. It really isn't. I think if you add more nodes into it, the writes would actually probably be equivalent or maybe even faster. So um, I wanted to do a demo, but there's just kind of so much to demo, it's kind of weird. So what I did instead is I created an application. And so I have the Amnesia Manager sample as well as a sample app and everything in here. All, the, all of this address, user, user token, configuration settings, state code, all of this here is stored in them. Um, you can configure it as to ETS or Amnesia. So if you want, you can go in. I have this all available on the GitHub repo for um, active memory. So if you Google active memory hex, for example, in the hex packages, you'll pull it up, look at the GitHub, and there's links to all of this on there. So you guys can pull these down. There's instructions. You can kind of play with them. UI UX is ugly. I am not a designer. Um, I barely know how to dress myself, so please don't. But feedback is really, really hope, uh, you know, really looking forward to. So if anybody got feedback, please feel free. I am looking for people to help contribute to this. I would really like to see other use cases and other people's struggles with it. I know there's some issues with amnesia when it comes to things like net splits um, and stuff of that nature, and that's kind of stuff that I want to get to tackle with. 
but I kind of want to see if other people are interested and other people want to get involved and help build some good tools and support around, around Amnesia and uh, EPS. And so for the future, I'm kind of looking at more extensions to this. Um, being able to handle attribute changes. So if you change the structure in a table where you want to add another field, you want to remove a field, you got to send it through a mutation of some kind. So finding a nice way that, that we can handle stuff like that, um, as well as improving the, the query syntaxes, this, you know, better error handling, better documentation, working on, I've heard that some people don't like the fact that each store is one gen server, so maybe I need to create a, a general server, maybe call it a plaza or a mall, I don't know, just as a joke, but something to handle multiple tables versus just one. Um, improve the net splits handling. I kind of want to tackle that issue because I think out of all the issues where amnesia has driven away people, unfortunately, is because I think net splits, that's what it seems like everybody comes to, everybody says it's the net splits. And um, I really think there's a lot of value in these tools, and I really think it's worth investing in. Kind of like what Maxim and them have said earlier, you know, instead of reinventing a wheel, let's enhance this wheel. I think there's very good use for these tools, and so I think we should give some attention to enhancing these, improving them, because um, I think they're really killer apps to the Elixir uh, and Erlang ecosystem that a lot of comp uh, languages just don't have and it can bring real value to our clients uh, and, our, and our customers and our companies we work for. And so that's pretty much it. Any, any, any questions or anything? Yeah. A round of applause first. Yes. Thank you very much. Very good whistling. Thank you for that. All right, we've got a question. Hey, great job, Aaron. Um, you. Question, you said that the store is backed by a gen server. Are all the read calls the one, the select, the withdraw going through that gen server? And if so, how are you getting around the fact that essentially that makes access to the store single threaded in high concurrency? Are you going to run into the gen server bottleneck there? Honestly? I don't remember how I implemented all of that. I'd have to go back and read it again. I don't think I implemented all of them through the gen server. I think the gen server is just really managing state and getting things initially set up. And I believe I just went straight, I went, I'm pretty sure now that I think about it, I went straight to ETS and Amnesia directly. I have, an ad, I have adapters, right. so we could add other things in there, you know, um, other key value stores you know, that if they followed the adaptive behavior, but I'm pretty sure I went straight to those yeah. themselves, but that's a good question. Thanks. Thank you, any other questions? Yes, the trustee, Lucas. Hey man, uh, first of all, like, a really nice talk, like, I, I had some, some troubles before with ETS, and I think you give me the path to, to solve them, but something that I, that I still want to find out how to do it is, like we, we already use ETS a lot in production and like we, we have this issue that is horizontally like, uh, like our systems like Kubernetes and something like this that right. we have right. lots of servers right. uh, to, to have only one thing. And the issue of like, like not sharing the ETS table. I, I know you shared like using Amnesia, for example, like to, to have one central thing, but how would you recommend for someone that like it's not easy to like change all the system to to use Amnesia, for example, how would you recommend like saving the ETS data, like having a centralized server just to to so all the, the other servers can access it, or each of them like is the best option so each of them has its own table. But it sounds like you really need Amnesia on that one. I yeah, could be yeah. misunderstanding you. But again, that's part of what this was. It was agnostic. So on that demo app, you can put all the tables as ETS and then just change them all to amnesia and none of the rest of the code changes. It can all stay the same. So that kind of sounds like what, what you would need is, is that way you could start with ETS and then, and then as you grow and you need to horizontally scale, you can migrate those to amnesia. But if you're going to be needing, you know, I'm no expert in these, but if you're going to be needing to just obviously share that information amongst nodes, you really want to use Amnesia. 
you'd yeah. want to use it. But I mean, feel free to play with this library. And, and I wouldn't think it would be too hard, because I, I backfilled some apps using this library after I made it. And it wasn't too terrible to implement, to be honest. It wasn't too terrible. But I'm a use case of one dude, so I look for other use cases. So if you want, let me, you know, play with it and let me know. Yeah, thank you. Like, this is the thing. Like, it makes sense, like, now seeing your, your presentation that Amnesia makes sense for our case. But, like, maybe it would be too hard to, to adapt all the system to use Amnesia. Right. This is why I did this question to, like, how to avoid Amnesia in, like, a system that already uses a lot of ETS, yeah. you know? But I think maybe trying to go to the right path and using Amnesia will be the correct way. Yeah. Thank Sounds you. Like it. Yeah. Any other questions from folks in the room? Okay, cool. Once again, thank you so much, Aaron. That was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you.